All right. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about resistance welding, or abbreviated as RW. On a set of plans, you can see a lot of different versions of resistance welding. And uh, typically, resistance welding is a little bit larger operation and is great for manufacturing processes, but takes a little bit more in-depth equipment. So, let's see. it's uh, great for thinner metals. For example, quarter-inch thick plates are ideal. And uh, it's a good process. Essentially, we'll put a video out there, some example videos of kind of how it works. But if you can visualize running electrical current through a connection, so for example, let's say we're taking two plates of metal, butting them up next to each other, and we have electrode here and electrode here, and we actually run electricity through this process, the resistance to flow of electricity is essentially what creates the heat that does the joining. All right? So it's not really that they're adding filler in place, they're actually just squeezing together and creating resistance. Now resistance to electricity flow is something you were already, already pretty well accustomed to. That's for example in an old fashioned, or not really old fashioned, but less and less common incandescent lights. You know, they have the little wire in between. You know, running electricity through that, pro running electricity through that wire generates light and heat because of resistance, resistance to flow. So that's essentially how the heat is generated to create the welding process of uh, resistance. And here's a little bit better picture of it, of the process. You have some force pushing down, and actually my joint wasn't a good example because my joint was more of a bust butt joint. You can make it work, but here's another, a better example of the pressure being applied. Let's see if we can get a better image. There we go. So electrode here, electrode here, pushing down, power, pulling electricity through the part, and the weld is occurring internally. Again, noting that there's no actual filler material used. The actual heat generated in between these two components creates the own, their own welding. Now there ends up being like a little weld nugget in the process too that is generated. Pressure obviously is a, po a point. You see that they show force here. Pressure occurring helps facilitate the actual resistance welding occurrence. Now this process is actually old, back in the 1800, 1880s actually. Uh, when resistance was determined to be a, a good process with electricity. It wasn't necessarily uh, commercialized back then, but uh, the concept was discovered at that point in time. Now, let's talk about some uh, interesting things, or more interesting or relevant to us, in terms of what types are used most commonly. And for that, I'll switch to this handy little paragraph here. First off, we've got resistance spot welding. Resistance seam welding, and notice the acronyms. Uh, projection welding, flash welding, upset welding. And each of these abbreviations are you know, gonna show up in the tail end of your welding symbol. So instead of necessarily being an RW, it could be a UW, or it could be a spot weld, which would be an RSW, or a flash, and you get the idea. The uh, spot welding resistance approach is actually a very, very uh, common one used uh, predominantly in, in manufacturing. As far as equipment goes, there's another, another handy graphic here. As you can see, a lot bigger setup. Um, in the case where you may actually need some heat, you may have some water connections, the welding gun system itself, which is in large view. See, look at that second. Uh, the machine itself, transformer and control panel. Obviously, you're going to have to have a transfer built in. Pretty hefty electrical operation going through this process, so you're going to have some big equipment. And you can see the electrodes occurring and the little weld nugget that it's a result as the weld cools. This is what it looks like sort of on the inside. All right, so that's something you're carting around that uh, easily. Now, in this particular case, you may actually consider, you know, if you were just doing one little spot or two, this may actually be considered spot welding. And in the RW procedure, of course, that's what I'm referring to, spot welds, or I should say the uh, RSW procedure for spot welding, you're going to put the part in, and you're going to weld, and you take the part out. It's not like a continuous stream or anything. So in that case, you're going to operate the machine specific to the need, not like a manufacturing assembly line with it. In... RSEW, when you're actually doing a continuous seam, then you've actually got a rotating type of system where it will create a continuous bead of successive welds. And um, 
the current is just intermittent. So the welder is essentially just going to go feed the parts through the process and have an entire bead as a result. In PW, or projection welding, actual projections, but well, first of all, this is a very, very automated process. You know, you're just probably going to observe this, but uh, the weld is predetermined by the weld parts before welding, and projections on the weld parts act as a point of resistance. So very automated and um, the actual projections are melted into the weld nugget. Not going to have a lot of input necessarily on your practical skills. Now flash is a little bit more interesting. The welding parts are actually secured in a holding device and are drawn toward each other as electric currents pass through the parts. An arc actually will occur and will melt the metal in the weld area and then the parts are sort of pressed together for fusion. So actually while it's heated up you uh, in, in terms of flowing the, the electric current through an arc is created you have molten metal on both sides and then you use pressure to press them together for fusion. And in this case it's more of a drawing operation instead of like a pressing down one top of the other you actually pull them close together so it might be a little bit more akin to a butt joint for an FW resistance. Now, keep in mind, one of the key things, between, difference between FW and UW is that the parts are already pressed together in the UW during the actual resistance uh, action. So, this is when you actually have fusion, but you have fusion going on during the weld, whereas the FW, the fusion sort of occurs after it's heated up and, and molten. So, those are a couple of examples of resistance welding, or I should say resistance welding processes. Oh, here's a good graphic on resistance seam welding so you can kind of see what I was referring to about spinning those electrodes. So you got some sheet metal here and you can see the electrode itself is not just a wheel that moves the thing along, it's actually an electrode that generates electricity. So you have the parts moving through and the wheels turning and let's see, conventional resistance overlapping spots, you can get that kind of pattern. So if I can zoom in for you just a hair, there we go, a little bit. You've got continuous seam welding. So this is basically is going to be controlled by the uh, when the current is applied. So if these electrodes are spinning, it doesn't necessarily mean the electricity is flowing all the time. So you turn the electricity off and off fast enough, or you actually keep it going, you're going to get a whole weld seam, uh, roll spot welding, or resistance welding in this particular case. So that actually helps a little bit with seam welding to get a feel for it. Now on the topic, while we're here, I did mention that resistance welding is a process that can be involved in plastics too. So I wanted to show you just a quick example of, of plastic resistance welding. Now they just refer to it as plastic welding in this particular case, but as you can see, the process involves the same kind of concept. Um, you've got two parts, you know, laying of plastic, you've got a laser heating the underlying material. Notice that it's using a laser to do it, necessarily, not necessarily running electricity through it. Uh, underlying material turn in turn heats up the top material and the weld cools and solidifies. So two different materials, layers are used to heat them up and then the weld nugget so to speak occurs in between those joints. So uh, great op operation you can see you can use for plastic welding of, of various shapes and sizes so it doesn't actually have to be limited to metal and with the amount of plastics obviously that we see in our world plastic welding is a, a awesome thing to consider and also included with the fact that we're being increasing our 3D printing applications with plastics now and uh, being able to weld them together is pretty cool. So what kind of uh, operations and where are good for resistance welding and where will we see it? Well, let's take a look. One of the things that we'll see is sheet metal applications with resistance welding. And these can be ferrous or non-ferrous, both iron and iron based or you know non-iron based, so aluminum and steel. Sheet metal, obviously, because the thin parts make uh, resistance welding more ideal. Remember, it's about a quarter inch or less. That's kind of the target thickness. Another great advantage of this are industries where cleaning is, is not desired. So a lot of cleaning is not uh, a good idea. So this process actually is a very clean and pure operation. So cleanup is not uh, a real big problem. The fact that you have so many controls associated with the process and so much automation makes it a good uh, accurate process. All the welds can be made in any position depending on what the need arises from. So let me write a few of these down for us real quick. So uh, say iron or 
non-iron metals. Uh, very clean. Very controlled. All positions. Most common joints are the lap, uh, lap and butt joint. Speed is a big deal because this thing can go very, very quick. And minimum training. So basically we can get operators trained up and get them going on the machine. It runs fast, it runs clean, and it works well with uh, sheet metal and thinner parts. So obviously automotive industry will be looking at this. And obviously lots of manufacturing in general. However, just so you know, the, you know, the larger machines is kind of the norm, but there are actually handheld smaller machines. Um, so there is uh, some flexibility. It's just you know, the equipment you typically see larger machines associated with this process. But portability is an option. So for example, here is, up here appears to be a portable uh, resistance welder. You can note the two different electrodes on each side of the material, and it's on wheels. There's a better version of a portable clamp system. So you can just see how the electricity flows through. Obviously, you're not going to get a lot of seam welding quick and easy out of that. And it looks like there's several different variations. Oh, that one seems to be portable, although pretty large and gangly, as you can see there. So but not to say that we can't move them around. Okay, so that is resistance welding. It's a great stopping point for us now, so uh, we'll see you next time. Make sure to check out some of the videos we provide on the process so you can sort of see it simulated in action.